right into it this is our Easter message and uh, oh it's great news but we're gonna read from Matthew 28 1 through 10 and it says after the Sabbath as the first day of the week was dawning Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb can you imagine the grief they felt thinking their Lord and Savior Jesus was dead they went to this tomb to uh, oh it must have been so bad and suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it his appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow they knew something was up boys something was up this was going to be a different day for fear of him the guard shook and became like dead men but the angel said to the women do not be afraid I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified He's not here, for he has been raised. 
as he said he would. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is the message for you. Oh, this is great. This is the Easter good news. He is risen. He's not in the tomb. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Oh, this is, this is the good news, folks. And I want to tell you, I want to give you some, uh, some interesting points here about this scripture. But I just want you to know God loves you. You know, it looks like everything is just going haywire in this world. It does, it does. But the good news is he rolled the stone away so they could see the tomb was empty. He's still moving stones in your life today. Let's look at this. The angel who announced the good news of the resurrection to the women gave him four messages. Number one, don't be afraid. The reality of the resurrection brings joy, not fear. When you are afraid, remember the empty tomb. There are so many reasons you could be afraid today. The pandemic, the wars and rumors of wars, uh, the racial upheaval and all the things are going on but just as the angel of the lord told the two marys not to be afraid i'm telling you today because of the resurrection of jesus christ do not be afraid there's hope there's hope number two they said he isn't here jesus is not dead and he's not to be looked for among the dead he's alive with his people God sent his son Jesus to be born from a virgin, to live as a baby and grow up as a man so that we could know what God is like. Then Jesus, the son of God, willingly laid down his life on the cross. But we celebrate today on Easter Sunday. He resurrected. He's no longer dead. The next thing they told him was, come and see. The women can check the evidence themselves. The tomb was empty. Then, and it's empty today, the resurrection is a historical fact. Over 500 people saw Jesus on that day. And many people have seen him in their hearts since that time. Millions upon millions of people. Number four, go quickly and tell. They were to spread the joy of the resurrection, and we too are to spread the joy of the resurrection. Jesus said in 1 Corinthians 15 that if all we have as Christians of this life, we are to be pitied, but that's not all we have. We have the resurrection. See, Jesus was the first fruit of the resurrection, and he told us just as he resurrected, we shall too. Now let's look at the uh, why the resurrection is the key to the Christian faith. Number one, just as Jesus promised he rose from the dead, there we can be confident that Jesus will accomplish all that he promised. There are over 7,200 promises in the Bible and Jesus made many promises. And the fact that he promised before time that he would willingly die on the cross and raised from the grid in three days, lets us know that all the other promises that he made are true, and they are to prosper you, not to harm you. Number two, Jesus' bodily resurrection shows us that the living Christ is ruler of God's eternal kingdom, not a false prophet or an imposter. I've read a lot of prophecies, and I'm sure... You've read many, and I've heard a lot of prophecies from people in my lifetime, I'm 58 years old, that have never come true. <laughs> that declares that they are false prophets. But Jesus, by declaring that he would 
die and rise again proves that he's a true prophet and that he represents the kingdom of God. Next, number three, we can be certain of our resurrection because he was resurrected. Death is not the end. There is future life. Oh, I will tell you, if all that I believed was that I would be born and live to be 60, 70, 80, maybe 90 years old, I'd be honest with you, I would be, I would have no hope. Because the older I get, people always say age is a number. Well, I'm sorry, age is not just a number. Age is the body's wearing out and things are happening. And if I thought that's all I had to look forward to, but I know for certain that Jesus said, that we too will resurrect. That when we die, our spirit and our soul goes to heaven. And then someday when the resurrection happens, then the bodies that are decayed in the ground will meet with the soul and the spirit and there'll be new bodies, but we'll be known for who we are. They knew Jesus when they saw him later. And we'll be known. We'll see our relatives, our loved ones who've gone ahead of us. Those who've inspired us, encouraged us, who followed Jesus, we'll see them again and we'll know who they are because we will have bodies, eternal bodies. Next, number four, the power that brought Jesus back to life is available to us to bring our spiritually dead selves back to life. I'm going to read to you in a few minutes from scripture to show you how you could have eternal life and you could be assured that you'd be resurrected. That's the greatest news. That's the good news. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn it. He came to bring life, eternal life. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Beautiful. Number five, the resurrection is the basis for the church's witness to the world. Jesus is more than just a human leader. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. Last Sunday, on Palm Sunday, I was preaching from Luke, and we got to the end of the passage where Jesus looked to the city, and he looked out over the city, and it says he wept. But there was a very key verse that I really never noticed before. He pronounced some things that were going to happen, some judgments and things that was going to happen to Jerusalem. And he said, these bad things would happen because... They did not recognize and welcome a visitation from God. See, Jesus was God's son. Therefore, Jesus was a visitation from God. And when Jesus went to heaven, he says he sent his Holy Spirit. So I want you today to have a visitation from God in a real way. So let's take a look at Romans chapter 10 verse 8 through 13, and see why I'm so excited to bring this message to you today. It says, the word is near you. It's on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Saved from what? Your sins. The penalty of your sins, the condemnation, the guilt, all these things that we carry around with us that hurt us and keep us down, we can be saved from those things when we turn our lives over to the care of Jesus. Verse 9 says, Because if you confess with your lips, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with his heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and is saved. Now, this is, this is right here, is, I think, is one of the most beautiful things. And it proves that Christianity is the most inclusive faith of any faith in the world, in the universe. Because it's for all people, black, white, red, yellow, brown, whatever color you want to place on it, whatever religion, whatever doctrine, whatever social economic status, financially. Listen to this. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who calls on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone. Everyone. 
So I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to give you a chance to call on the name of the Lord. I've heard it said like this before. It's as easy as A, B, C. I've heard it said like this before. Receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior is as easy as A, B, C. First, A, admit that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You've sinned, I've sinned. Everyone has sinned except for Jesus. But the good news is, Romans is telling us, if we believe in heart and confess with our mouths, we shall be saved. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It's a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. We're saved by grace through faith. So, A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave. And then see, confess with your mouth. The verse we just read said, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So I'm going to say a prayer with you now. If you'd like to say this prayer, you can know for certain that you have eternal life. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've sinned against you, against people that I love, against people that I don't love. And I ask you to forgive me. I want to turn my life around. I don't want to live that way anymore. I want your forgiveness for my sins. And I want to... I want to confess with my mouth that I believe in my heart that Christ rose from the dead. And I want to put all my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ who loved me and gave himself up for me. If you said that prayer, you can be assured that you now are a child of God. And if you'd like some more information, you can, you can send me an email at john at nazcon.com, J-O-H-N at N-A-Z. K-I-N-E.com or give me a call at the church, the Wahiwa Community Church of the Nazarene, 808-621-6629. Or come by and see us in person. Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock, 1805 California Avenue. We have three churches meeting in this building now. 8 o'clock, Wahiwa Community Church of the Nazarene, 10 o'clock, Calvary Chapel, Wahiwa, and at 12 o'clock, they start setting up. I think it's around one o'clock. The Lighthouse Church of the Nazarene. You have to have reservations for that one. But listen, there's over 55 churches in Wahiwa. I know you can find a good one in all those churches. But go to church. Get involved in a Bible study group. Pray and fellowship and serve the Lord. And I promise you, all these things that you're fearing and all these things that just seem to keep you down, will lift. Little by little, they'll lift. And if you're struggling with a hurt habit or hang-up, we have Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights at 7 o'clock. We meet up here at 1805 California Avenue, and we have a lesson. We have worship. We break into small groups. We don't try to fix each other. We just listen. We listen to our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And just by having someone to talk to, we feel part of the human race. Hey, Stan, how you doing? Hey, not too bad. How's it going? Good. Hey, I was looking at this bulletin that my wife brought home from church about this Celebrate Recovery stuff at their at Nazarene Church. She keeps, she won't get off my back. She wants me to go. You want to go with me? No, man, that's Celebrate Recovery. That's like overrated, man. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, I think it's for like addicts and alcoholics. People just getting out of jail or something. But Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. like a, I hear it's like a 12-step like a something. I don't know exactly what it's all about. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I don't think guys like us need it, but man, it gets a wife off our back. Oh, can you hold on for a second? I got to take my... I gotta check my blood sugar here for a second. Yeah, no problem. Hold on for no a problem. You know, I haven't had a drink in 27 years. I don't know why it's such a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. In I fact, I'm, I'm almost. I, I'm gonna head out to uh, Rainbow's to get a 
a mixed plate with gravy all over <laughs> oh, and man, some uh, extra good. mac salad, man. I'm thinking about that right now. Let me check my blood sugar and make sure that I'm okay. Okay. When people say food addiction is a problem. I mean, what's the big What's the big deal about food? I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, I'll get one of those and a, a chili chili frank plate on top of that. I think that'll be good, man. Can you pick up me up some malasada? Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you want this with the extra cinnamon and extra yeah, sugar on yeah. it? Yeah. So my blood sugar is okay. So. Oh, good, good. good. Uh, just wait another second. I've got to take this Nexium because I have chronic indigestion. Oh, 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 oh. Hiatal hernia, you know. Yeah. Because I eat yeah. Well, you know, we just stay away from, we just stay away from, from that pork stuff. You know? I gotta take but this met. I think it's gonna be okay. I gotta take this metformin. Ah, this stuff gives me bad diarrhea. Oh man, yeah. So let me. Yeah. And I gotta take this other stuff for heart. Hmm. I feel sorry for those people who have this drinking and drugging problems. Yeah. I know. I Let know. me it's take terrible. this. I better take you know? this uh, diarrhea stuff too, because I get diarrhea a lot. Yeah. Okay. I'm supposed to check my blood pressure now, but I'm not going to do that. That's just ridiculous. I don't need all this stuff. So, yeah, you know, I know, I know. Yeah, so what I'll do is uh, I'll come pick you up and we'll go head out to Rainbows and we'll stop by Leonard's and then <laughs> we'll go to this place that has a really good ice cream yeah. uh, in Kalihi. <laughs> so we'll just stop for some ice cream, man. Awesome. So, right hey, wait, wait a minute. Why don't we just go to get our wives off our back? Because since we don't really, well, I know you're not married, but maybe it'll make your kids happy. But since yeah. we don't have yeah, a problem, you know okay. maybe we could go help somebody else since we don't have any problems. Hey, you know what? I think that's a great idea. You and, know, uh, you can like, uh, uh, that, that'd be like one of those things to get closer to heaven, man, you know? We'll sit way in the back, and then we'll come in a little bit late so nobody kind of, you know, gets our name or something. And then just before it's over, we'll slip out the back door. Is that hey, a plan? Like a plan. And we'll head hey, to Zippy's. Hey, hopefully they got some, like, donuts and stuff. That'd be cool. And afterwards, we'll go to Zippy's and get the, uh, uh, what is that? Hamburger steak and gravy mashed potatoes. That'd be awesome. And, yeah, I'll, and we'll tell everybody, oh, we're working on ourselves. We're working on ourselves. Yeah. All right. So pick Don't me up. Plan, it starts at 7. Pick me up like quarter after because I won't be there too early. And then we'll okay. slip in late and go out. But, hey, thank you, man. I know you're always a good friend trying to help me. You know, yeah. I've always tried to find people that agree with me to, I don't want to go to places where somebody might tell me I need something different from what I need. No, we're, we're all good. We, we need friends to back us we're up. Good, yeah, so we're good, man. We're I'll good. see you then, brother. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. I'll come pick you up for a bit. Okay, okay bye. bye. So God bless you. Have a great day. We're going to end this broadcast with, uh, with a beautiful song. I hope it lifts your heart. As always, I want to let you know, NASCAD TV is about hope, encouragement, and victory. And if you want to join us on our service at 8 o'clock on Sunday, or seven on Monday, you can. But if you're still not ready to go out in public, you can you can get on to our uh, Facebook page at the Wahiwa Community Church of the Nazarene. God bless you and have a great day. He is the light unto the nations. He is our refuge in the storm. He is our peace in tribulation. He is our hope, the Holy One. Oh, la donai kito, kilelam hasto tu, la donai kito. Here we bow in adoration, giving thanks for all he's done. Here we stand in revelation, we are redeemed, redeemed by the Son. Oh, do la do la quito, give la hasto. La do na kito. 
potu la donna kito e la hasko tu la donna kito all who are hungry all who are thirsty come from the east and the west all who are broken all who need mercy drink from the fountain of rest all who are hungry all who are thirsty come from the east and the west all who are broken all who need mercy drink from the fountain of rest oh he is good endures oh he is good forever oh he is good oh his love endures oh he is good forever For he is good, and his love endures. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Yes, Lord, you are good. You are good.